Hey guys, I promised you that I would do a new art challenge this year, so here it is. There are many reasons why I'm excited about this challenge, but I think most of all I'm excited to get to know you guys and what kind of artists you are. Also, if you don't have your own style yet, I think this challenge is a great way to find out what comes naturally to you. Also for some, I hope that this will be a turning point to finding your own style and maybe even a way to enjoy creating art. The first time that I shot this video, I started it out with this big apology, but one of the things that I want to change in myself this year is to make less useless apologies. Instead, I'm going to do something completely different instead at the end of this video. Before the whole pandemic started, I was painting one day and it was one of these green grassy hill paintings that I like doing. And one of my friends that I respect a lot as an artist looked at this painting and he said to me, Mikko, you should challenge yourself. You should go out of your comfort zone and do weapon designs. I can't even count the times I've heard this type of a suggestion, especially from industry people. I always took it as a good advice and then proceeded to climb whatever hills they were pointing me towards. Also, art teachers usually use this as advice, and I always thought that it's good advice, until I just had enough one day. If I'm completely honest, I'm not that into practicing weapon designs. I'm not good at it, and the reason why I'm not good at it is because I haven't done tons and tons of them. But that's not the only reason. The bigger reason is that I, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, even if I dedicated one whole year of doing weapon designs, maybe I would be better at it, but why? If somebody is looking to hire an artist to do weapon designs, let's say for the next Borderlands game, they would still be better off hiring somebody else who is actually excited about doing weapon designs. Not somebody who has just like tortured themselves basically to learn like a basic level of skill. Because I can practice all I want, but I will never be more excited about doing that thing that I'm just not naturally interested in. There is one part of art skills that is impossible to fake, and that is enthusiasm. So when my friend suggested me this comfort zone thing that I should do weapon designs just to push my design skills, I turned to him and said, can you name five artists that are successful in their career, that are doing anything outside of their comfort zone right now. Because I can't, I can't think of five people. Like every, every artist that I personally admire, they are clearly excited about the topics and the style that they are using to do their art and to do their creative work. That is their core thing. They are enjoying their art. And when I see it, I think it's infectious and that's the effect that I want my art to have on people. I want people to look at my art and see that like that guy, he clearly loved painting that painting. I don't want anybody to look at my paintings and think that the only takeaway there is that that guy has a wide range of design skills. <laughs> um, even if somebody thinks that it might boost my ego for a moment, but I don't think that's a way to create any type of good impact in the world through creativity, and I think that would be a waste of my and everybody else's time. I think style is not just a way you draw noses or how realistic your paintings are. I think style is something that comes easy to you and communicates who you are as a person and as an artist. Finding your style is not easy, but weirdly enough, it's the only thing in art that you don't need to try hard to get good at. The hard part is understanding those moments when you are standing in the way of your style and just get out of the way and let your art be what it naturally wants to be. For me, one of those moments was when I wrote just as a joke, not a great joke, but I tried. I wrote down as a caption to an Instagram post that I will no longer be apologizing for the almond of cypress trees in my paintings. As soon as I wrote that down as text, I realized this is an actual fear <laughs> that I have, that people might think that I'm doing too much of the thing that comes easy to me, that I enjoy doing, 
who am I actually apologizing for? And that was such a huge game changer for me because I just realized I'm not going to apologize for any style or subject that I do in my paintings that I enjoy. And it's a changed art so drastically for me. So that is what this challenge is also about because I want everybody to have this shift in their thinking towards what art can be for you and how enjoyable it can be if you just stop, I don't know, trying to impress everybody else and just understand what it is that you actually like painting. Once I wrote down that sentence, I realized that I had been trying to impress and please people that were only interested in lowering my self-esteem by making me feel bad about the things that I like to paint. <laughs> and that makes no sense. And the only thing that had been standing in my way was really myself. I needed my own permission to enjoy the things that I like. When you paint, I think everybody should paint from this like crazy, uncensored, childlike excitement for what you want to show and tell the world. The rest of us, we can we can't get as excited about probably that thing that you're painting, but we can feel your excitement through the way that you are painting it. So that's why I think this challenge is extremely important. So starting from right now, I'm starting an art challenge called Art from Comfort Zone. The prompt of this challenge is to paint what you like to paint. Not what you want to paint or what kind of artist you want to become, but you, what you already like painting and communicate that not through just the painting itself or art piece. It can be in any style or whatever subject matter, but you have to communicate in the caption what it is that you like about that thing that you are painting. If it's not really clear what you like painting, think about this, that if you had to do 100 of these paintings, this would be the easiest subject for you to paint because you would just love painting it so much that you would never get tired of it. I will be sharing your art in my IG stories. The art challenge will officially run until the end of June. I hope that I can also share some of your art on this YouTube channel. But before I share anyone's artwork here, I will first DM you and ask for your permission. So there's no danger of me featuring you on this channel without your permission. Now there are a few simple rules, so I'm gonna post these in text format on my Instagram as well, and here. So first of all, in your caption you should explain what it is about this style or subject that you find so enjoyable that you could just paint this stuff endlessly. Think of this as your opportunity to inspire other people that read this text to be creative and get excited about this subject matter as well. But most importantly, it's a way for them to get to know you and your art too. Now, this is hard, but I'm going to be very strict on this. Don't apologize for your current skill level. We all understand that art is an endless journey for all of us. You will get better as you make more paintings. Don't keep apologizing for your current level of skill in your paintings. It's Nobody needs to hear that. Try to appreciate your art for what it already is, and that way it will be much easier to make more of it. 3. Now this is important part for finding your style. This challenge is about what you like to paint. This is not what you want to paint. As you make these paintings, I hope that this difference will become more clear to you. Now, this is not an easy difference to notice because the pull of what we want to paint is so much stronger than noticing what we like to paint, but for finding your own style, it's important. So pay attention to it and hopefully this way some of you will be able to find your own style. Like with my previous art challenge, there's no limit to how many paintings you can make, so just make as many as you like. And I'm not going to limit myself in featuring one artist only one time if I feel like featuring them multiple times. Be nice. Now, I know that I can't make this a rule or make sure that everybody is being respectful, but I'm just asking this as a favor, that there are so many artists 
that are just starting out their creative journey and it means a lot to them when their art is commented on, liked and featured. So browse the hashtag and comment on other people's work as well. Be supportive. I promise you that when you are supportive to other artists, it's going to be so much easier to be supportive of your own work as well. It means a lot to them, so I'm, I'm just asking. <laughs> be kind and support each other. Remember that this is not a declaration of what kind of artist you are going to be in the future. We all change as time goes on, but this is a declaration of what you like painting right now. And I think it's really important to notice that. And this brings us to the apology that I decided not to include in the beginning part of this video. The first time that I shot this video, I apologized that like, I understand that working hard is important and this is about finding your own style, not about not working hard, because I understand that people use this comfort zone term as a way to describe that they want to work hard and that's why they are out of their comfort zone. But the more I thought about it, I was like, no, I don't think even that is something that I support. I, I love painting and I even love making these videos. And if I constantly kept saying to myself that doing this is outside of my comfort zone, that when I'm painting, I'm doing something uncomfortable. I think words matter and that sort of self-talk, it will cost you later because you are telling yourself subconsciously that I am doing something uncomfortable every time that you paint. Well, guess what after two years? You don't want to be uncomfortable anymore. You want to do something that actually feels nice. And art is fun. And if you keep having that sort of self-talk that it's uncomfortable, you're just not going to want to do it anymore. So I don't think it's healthy and I'm not supporting that. So I'm not gonna say sorry for that. I do think that practice is important, but practice can also be fun and painting can be enjoyable. And I think this is a really important distinction to make. If I told myself that I'm doing something uncomfortable every time that I pick up the brush, that painting is just a mountain of trials. When this guy tells me that I should do more weapon designs, what if I just decide that I'm going to do three years of weapon designs, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, even though it's uncomfortable that I like, don't like to do it. What if this whole channel was just Mikko tries to get good at weapon designs and you would all have to suffer through me trying to get good at weapon designs, even though I hate doing them. What is the end goal of that? Even if they hire me to do weapon designs for some video game, if I don't enjoy the work, will any of that have been worth it then? I, I don't think so. So I will just say no to all of that and I'm gonna do the fun paintings and get hired to do commissions that I actually like doing that are the type of paintings that I like to paint. I'm gonna go first and write a caption for this painting called Guidance. I love painting nature. I love painting it so much. And the reason why I add these fantasy elements is because I'm more interested in capturing the feeling and the mood and thoughts that I have when I'm in a forest. That is more interesting for me to paint than just depict a realistic forest because then I just could take a photograph and that would not convey the same emotions the same way. The reason why I love painting nature is because I think deep down I believe that nature heals all wounds and the experience of painting nature for me in some weird magical way it's a very healing experience and for that reason I can't see myself ever getting tired of this subject because it just makes me feel good every time and sometimes that emotion is even conveyed to the people that are watching my art and whenever I see those comments I feel like I'm doing something good in the world and that makes me feel like my art has purpose. I'm Mikko and this is Art from Comfort Zone. Let's paint stuff. By the way, I have to say that I don't know how the audio of this is going to turn out because 
Bibi, my dog, is just like devouring one of my shoes there, but it's the only way that she's quiet, so I just have to do this now.